Good morning, Maranata family. How's everyone doing after 11 weeks of quarantine? We hope you're all doing fine and excited for today's message. We miss you all. And remember, no matter what the situation is, there is no father like our Heavenly Father. So what happens or whatever happens, God is our help. He is our provider, our comfort. To our first-time viewers, perhaps you're thinking, what is this group about? Well, thanks for checking in to our domain. Uh, Kirk Cameron said, there's nothing more important than your eternal salvation. And since everything in this world is subject to decay, and since life is short, I suggest that you secure your eternal life first. Make eternal life your highest priority in life. Today is your day of salvation. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in John chapter 3, Do not be surprised if I tell you, you must be born again. The Savior himself told the priest Nicodemus, you must be born again. So if a Jewish priest needs spiritual rebirth to be saved, so are we. So read John chapter 3 and then be sure to respond from, re from repenting from sin by committing your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you don't know what to do, but you want to be saved, or if you have questions, clarifications concerning the process of salvation, please do write me a message on my Armand Valdez Facebook account. We love you and thank you for visiting. Last week, Kuya Pierre exhorted on the things that make for your peace. That was a timely message. To obtain peace in times of trouble, we need to humble ourselves and then cast all our cares to Him and to have our minds renewed to the thoughts of God found in scriptures. We have to see things the way God sees them, said Sir Pierre. So, if you missed that message last week, you can watch it later. Now, on top of everything that is going on around the world, since the COVID-19 outbreak to the collapsing world economy and the present lawlessness, it, it, will not, it does not surprise us to hear about people getting depressed and filled with fear and uncertainty. This is not happening only in other countries, but also happening in our country, the Philippines. Even in the Christian community, many are affected, especially those who just lost their job because some companies had to retrench or they had to tighten their belt and other businesses had no option but to close down. Thus, increasing the number of unemployed people. And the more this quarantine is extended, the more the economy goes down. So what's going to happen after this? Well, let me speak in behalf of those who are completely sold out for Jesus or those who are bananas for Jesus. They will go after God. And then they will become more intimate and dependent on God. They will pray for wisdom. They will pray for open doors, pray for new businesses. And God will help them. God will provide for them. God will lead them. And then God will bless them. There is no father like our Heavenly Father. He will not fail us. So stay connected with your DBS family, stay connected with your home group family, stay connected with our church family. 
So about three Sundays ago, I shared with you about uh, doing the Father's business. Today, I'd like to do part two. We're not done with that topic since it pertains to God's business, which is eternal. We are busy with our secular business, but God's soul business is far more important. It's about saving lives. It's about leading the lost to Christ. So allow me to read three passages from our previous preachings. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Verse 18, All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Now, as ambassadors of Christ, we represent Christ to the people of the world who continually are living in darkness. We speak in behalf of our King, but have you heard of a country who sent an ambassador to another country to speak on their behalf that is mute or that is not able to speak? Of course, there's none. Why would a king or why would a president send someone who cannot speak on behalf of the nation? But I know of a kingdom whose ambassadors are reluctant to speak. They have many alibis <laughs> why they cannot share their faith in Christ. They are very good with delaying tactics. And I'm not the judge, so I will not judge. But be the judge to yourself or just judge yourself. Which ambassador are you? Active or inactive? Let's move to the next scripture. John chapter 15, verses 15 to 17. It says, The Lord Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father I have made known to you. Verse 16, So you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, Jesus said, the Father will give you. Verse 17, This is my command. Love each other. This is the Father's business. You and I cannot do the Father's business without love in our hearts. Love comes from God. God is love. He is love himself. If you lack love in your heart, well, spend more time with God and His Word. Worship God the atmosphere of His presence will change your heart. It will melt your fears. It will melt your worries. It will melt your anger and unforgivingness. It will transform your hate and anger to love and forgive people. Remember, people will respond to love. So recharge your love batteries in the presence of God. Okay? Love is the main factor. It is the main component that will drive us to reach the lost, to win the lost, to win our online friends. Now the question is, do you care about your online friends? Do you want your online friends 
to hear the gospel? Do you want your online friends to come to Jesus and be saved? If yes, then what are you doing to make that happen? Are you doing enough to communicate the gospel to them online? But, but I prayed for the, their salvation, Pastor. I prayed for them, Brother Arman. That's good. As long as you don't pray like this. Here I am, Lord, send someone else. Or here I am, Lord, send them. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. All right? Don't pray like that. Say, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, anoint me. Here I am, Lord, move me. Here I am, Lord, push me to preach the gospel online. Amen? So, friends, my recommendation is put some hands and feet to your prayers it's time to act on it reach out speak out preach the gospel online while it's still day or while we are permitted to preach online you know before the COVID-19 lockdown or quarantine we were free to go and travel anywhere anytime we had all the luxury of time, all the freedom to share the gospel to anyone, anywhere, anytime. But now, there are restrictions due to the pandemic. We cannot go anywhere, anytime we want. We have to wear masks and observe social distancing. But we have the internet. We have internet access right no curfew hours um, it's our portal to spread the gospel online and if we choose to ignore this time and opportunity then on judgment day i will not tell you that i told you so john john 9 4 jesus said we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day for night is coming when no one can work now it's time to prepare let us seize the opportunity strike while the iron is hot the world is getting darker friends night is coming and we have limited window so start preaching in front of the mirror Practice, 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 practice. Just record yourself and then post it online while the gospel is not restricted in the World Wide Web. Okay? Next passage. Now, you might say, Brother Armand, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do this or I'm not sure if I can do that because I'm a shy person. I am not an eloquent speaker, so do I. I don't, I don't have the proper training for this. Um, they, might, they might laugh at me and then reject me, etc., uh, etc., etc. Et so, what is the solution? Unsa ang solution sa pagkatalawan nato? What is the solution? to cover this what is the solution to our lack of courage in sharing the gospel God the Holy Spirit and prayer that's the answer let me read to you Acts 1 8 but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It is the Holy Spirit, friends. He is the answer. We need to remember 
Know that the Holy Spirit who lives in you, He lives in you since the day you gave your life to Jesus. That's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. The Holy Spirit is in us. So, and He's waiting for you to open your mouth. So don't be quiet. Speak out. The Holy Spirit will enable you the moment you open your mouth. So commune with the Holy Spirit. You know, listen and, and learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to His emotion. Assimilate in the Spirit. And you will learn how to hear His voice in your heart. John chapter 10, 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. Again, my sheep hear my voice. So again, by spending more time with God and His Word, you will become familiar to His voice. You will become familiar to His will and to His ways. You will know and understand God's conviction in your heart regarding the difference between right and wrong, between yes or no, true or false. You will sense God's steering in you. So you will discern the truth from deception and know when to stop, when to wait, and when to go. Such sensitivity to the gentle nudge of the Holy Spirit is developed over time. Over time. Not overnight. It's over time. So the more you spend time with God, and in His Word, okay, then you will learn how to hear His voice. You will become acquainted to His presence and to His leading. Then, you are no longer ignorant to the leading of the Spirit because at this point, a new habit is formed, which I call a constant conscious fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In short, prayer becomes a lifestyle. So whatever you're doing, okay, just talk to God. Practice that. Start from there, okay? Now, I have an illustration. Uh, wait. For our illustration, I'd like to use a flashlight. See this flashlight? No matter how expensive this flashlight is, if it does not work, it is useless and it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out in the trash. Now, what about these cameras? What is the difference between these two cameras? Both have same form same shape but the difference lies in their functionality this fake camera don't function and the real one does our expectation is met when you use the real camera okay now as a genuine blood-bought spirit-filled believer of christ are you this or this? Which one are you? Now you might say, Brother, I am not, not a fake Christian. Question is, since you claim to be a true Christian, then are you functioning like how a true spirit-filled believer function? Are you functioning like a true spirit-filled believer? believer in serving God or or were like a genuine camera that acts like a fake camera and only you can answer that are you an active witness for Christ are you concerned about the salvation of your friends or are you concerned more about your reputation to your friends you worry about how they will react or treat you 
after you preaching the gospel to them. Now, it's a choice between Jesus or friends. Who will you please? The Savior or your friends? Well, you say, Pastor, I'm afraid, you know, that they might not like it. Well, the gospel is confrontational by nature. That's why we kind of think twice if we will share the gospel or not. But, the proclamation of the gospel is our job. Our job is to proclaim the gospel and God's job is to save them. It is God's will and it is, there's no need to, to, to seek God whether he wants us to share the gospel or not because he already told us to go. He said, go, preach the gospel to everyone. That's Mark chapter 16. So friends, let us do the Father's business. Preach the gospel online. Mm. Now, I mentioned about our online witnessing contest last May 17, and supposedly it ends today, June 7, 2020. Well, since GCQ or general community quarantine was extended, let's extend our online witnessing contest to June 15, 2020 also, to give others the chance to participate. Um, if you want to know the details, please review our May 17 broadcast, but later. Now for your application or for our application, we have samples that you can follow or copy paste for your online witnessing. You may duplicate everything word for word or make some revisions. It's, it's up to you as long as God is glorified. Okay? So here's sample number one. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Would you like to receive the gift of eternal life? It is written, If you say with your mouth that Jesus is our Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you want to receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, then pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner, and I repent of my sins. Forgive my sins and save me. I believe you died in my place and rose from the grave on the third day. Lord Jesus, I place my trust in you for my salvation and confess that you are my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life through your Holy Spirit. Amen. If you pray that prayer from your heart, and receive the gift of eternal life by faith, and place your trust in Christ's substitutionary death on the cross, then you are now a child of God. So then, just as you receive Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in strength, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Thank you, and God bless you. And sample number two. Hi, so these are seven things God wants you to know. First thing is, you are a sinner. Not you in particular, but all of us. Everyone is guilty of sin. And the penalty for sin is death. This is according to Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23. Number two, God is holy and he is just. Therefore, he will not tolerate your sin or let it go unpunished. This is according to Romans 1.18. Number three, he is perfect and righteous. This makes all good works nullified or all good works are like filthy rags in the sight of God. So there is nothing you can do to save yourself. This is from Isaiah 64.6. Number four, God loves you. 
and he doesn't want to punish you. So, this is why he sent his one and only son to die in our place. He sent Jesus Christ and he suffered on the cross and paid for the penalty of our sins so he can grant us forgiveness and eternal life. This is from John 3, 16. Number five, spiritual birth is necessary. You won't be able to see the kingdom of God, and this refers to his rulership in your life if you are spiritually dead. You cannot see the kingdom of God if you are spiritually dead. This is according to John 3.3. 3. Number six, God is offering you eternal life. Eternal life is a gift, but it is only given to those who believe and commit their lives to follow Jesus Christ. Eternal life does not apply to those who refuse to submit into the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This is from John 3.36. Last one, seven. He is interested, God is interested, to establish a personal relationship with you. God is holy, so He demands His people to repent from their sins because He is holy, believe the gospel, confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and sincerely follow Jesus. This is from Romans 10, 9 to 10. Thank you for listening to me on what seven things God wants you to know. The Bible says in Proverbs 11:30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So, those who led many to Christ or those who led many to righteousness shines the brightest. So get busy, family. Let us storm the internet with the gospel of Christ. And remember the phrase, by all means. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, he said, I have become all things to all men or to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. Verse 23, I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Amen. Our blessing and eternal reward is with God. Everyone that preaches the gospel will receive a reward or their reward in full. See you at the Bima or on the Day of Reckoning.